Hi everyone, it's James Griffiths. Welcome back to the channel and another Vinyl Finds video. I've been buying quite a lot of records. They're flying in from all corners and uh, getting in uh, my way, getting under feet. So I uh, thought if I could show a few of these then I can finally put them away, shelve them and uh, come back to them another day. So I've been enjoying all these, spinning them quite a lot over the last couple of months actually. I'm going to start by showing some records from uh, Wales, from North Wales, from the shop Moonlight Records, uh, which I've talked about a few times now uh, in recent times. It's a shop in Wrexham that I used to frequent when I was a teenager, I started going back there. Uh, got a couple of things, really nice things to show from there. Then I'm going to go to Oxfam in Lancaster with some really, really nice finds. And then I'm going to finish off in Wales again, this time at um, Acorn Antiques, just outside Wrexham. So, the first one, uh, this is from Moonlight Records. This is Big Audio Dynamite and Number 10 Upping Street, which was a pun on Number 10 Downing Street. Uh, Mick Jones from The Clash and um, his partner in crime for this particular band being um, Don Letts, who is a broadcaster now in this country, in the UK. Quite an interesting band, quite ahead of their time really. You know, when I listened to this album, this came out I think in 1986, it was their third album. You can hear a lot of stuff on this which sounds like, you know, 90s dance music, that kind of combination of squally guitars and um, drum machines. I can definitely hear Shades of the Chemical Brothers, uh, you know, and a few other bands like that uh, that came around a bit later. This album is historically interesting as it is. Um, it was the album that saw Mick Jones team up with his old partner in crime from The Clash, Joe Strummer. Uh, Joe produced the album or co-produced the album and he also wrote maybe five or six songs so uh, nice to get hold of this really really fun album actually always good fun and uh, they're quite a good band to listen to as the weather starts to improve as the spring uh, starts to hit um, I've got a couple of their other records now a while ago I was thinking you know do I just basically need a CD best of or big audio dynamite because I do have one um, but every time I pick up one of their records and listen to it I always really enjoy it and for some reason they're always in really really nice condition so uh, and really affordable, so I couldn't leave that one behind. I think it was only maybe a fiver, so Big Audio Dynamites from 1986. Um, this was a Christmas record that I gave to my mum to give to me for Christmas, uh, so couldn't resist it when I saw it in the racks. Blondie, Plastic Letters, which was their second album, um, came out in 19... I don't know when it came out, actually, maybe 78, I'm going to guess. Um, this is the album that contains their big enormo hit, Denis, uh, and there's a few other really great tracks on this. Uh, I'm on E at the end of side one, uh, which is a very frenetic track. Um, Bermuda Triangle Blues, Flight 45, which is pretty moody. Um, I didn't have the nerve to say no at the start of side two, very catchy pop song. I think this album is quite highly regarded in the Blondie discography. Obviously, you know, it's not as... Uh, Iconic as Parallel Lines, but I think it's uh, it's a good one. It's on Blue Chrysalis. This was really cheap. It was only about three or four pounds, so that was definitely coming home with me. <clears throat> uh, and the third one that I'll show from Moonlight Records. This I took a punt on this because it's a record I've been looking for for a very long time, and you very rarely see it. And this one had some cover damage. Not sort of major cover damage, but it was quite scruffy. But the record looked okay. It was um, very, very dirty, but I couldn't really see many scratches. I thought I'd take a punt uh, on this. This was £5, Randy Newman, Sail Away, which for some reason, uh, which for some people I think is his big major album, really. Um, it's the one that has Simon Smith and the Amazing Dancing Bear on it, which I first heard, I first heard that in one of the two... Muppet Show LPs, which came out uh, in the late 1970s. Brilliant song. And, um, you know, it contains the title track, Sail Away. It's Lonely at the Top, um, Burn on Big River, Old Man. A very moody, contemplative record, lots of piano in it. And, um, like I said, just not one that you see around, really. And for £5, there was no way I was going to leave that behind. And uh, it's not perfect in terms of the condition, but I could tell, I could tell from looking at it that it was it was mainly dust and grime, you know, rather than 
scratches or damage. So anyway, I thought I would um, add that to the Randy Newman collection. I think I've got most of the records by him now that I want. Maybe there are some later ones, but this one is definitely a classic. So Randy Newman and Sail Away. Okay, moving on to the Oxfam finds now. And uh, I was really, really chuffed to find this one. A record I haven't seen since I think it was 1994. I last saw a copy of this record, Muddy Waters Hard Again. The copy that I saw was in the collection of a friend of mine who moved into a house in Leeds back in, it would have been 94, uh, with a guy who had a really good collection of records. He was really into black music, he was into funk and soul. He had a few blues records and this was one of the ones that he had in his collection. Uh, in fact, when I bought this, I messaged him, my friend, he moved to Australia many years ago and I haven't seen him for a long time and he messaged back to say god you've got a good memory <laughs> i said yeah i do seem to remember that kind of thing if i see a particular record in someone's collection it does uh, it does lodge in my brain anyway really really nice copy of this record which was um I think it was the first album that he did with Johnny Winter. Um, there was a, a procession of records that they did together in the 1970s. This one came out in 1977. Tremendous album, really good, really shows Muddy uh, having a bit of a new lease of life. Johnny Winter, Pine Top Perkins uh, on piano, James Cotton on harmonica, um, and it featured some re recordings of some classic Muddy songs. There's a new version of Manish Boy on here new version of um, I Can't Be Satisfied, you know, these are songs which go right back into the misty um, prehistory of his career, really. Um, but um, the band are on fire, you know, really, really cooking. It's one of those albums where you can, you can really hear them in the studio, just stripping paint off the walls with their sound. There's a bit of audio verite chatter in between tracks, you know, at the end of songs, you hear them kind of going, woo! You know, we nailed it, man. You know, it's that. It's just got that kind of vibe to it. Um, just great to get it, and uh, going to be on the lookout now for a copy of Electric Mud, which is the other big one by Muddy, which uh, I've been looking for for donkey's years. This was the first album he did after moving from um, Chess Records. Chess. In the late 1970s, Chess turned into a reissues label and Muddy signed to uh, Blue, Blue Sky Records uh, for, this, for this album. Not sure how many more records he did after that on that label, but um, this was definitely a good one anyway. So, yeah. Muddy Waters from Oxfam, I don't know, I think that was probably about maybe £8, £10. So, that was coming home with me. <clears throat> Um, different Day, a couple of really nice uh, African albums. Uh, this one was much, much cheaper than you can often find it online. Salif Keita and Sorrow. This will go for up to £50, £60 online sometimes for a vinyl copy. Um, one of his many, many, many albums came out in 1987 on uh, Blue Mountain Records. Um, and... Um, yeah, I picked up a record by Salif Keita a couple of years ago, which I enjoyed. This one is kind of much of the same, really. I, I read a review on Amazon from somebody who was really berating this album, and he accused it of being... Uh, I can't remember what he said now, but he said it was something like polite jazz funk in the level 42 vein with some African vocals, which I think is is very unfair. Yes, it is. It is definitely... It's got that airbrushed 80s sound to it. I think Salif Keita, uh, who's from Mali known as the Golden Voice of Africa. I think later on he did go on to do probably more rootsy, uh, you know, maybe a bit more authentic, so-called. This has got that 80s sound to it, which was all over the radio. Back in sort of 1986, 87, you had John Peel playing a lot of African music, Andy Kershaw. Listening to it really takes you straight back to those times, really, those early days of what they used to call world music, really horrible uh, phrase that it is. But... Um, it's a really, really nice album, actually. Maybe occasional blandness coming through. You've got that mixture of African instruments with the synthesizers, and um, but some fantastic vocals from Salif Keita and some incredible backing vocals as well. A couple of really nice slower tunes on side two. Kono, the second track on side two, is just absolutely wonderful. Very, very evocative, and um, I do find this kind of music quite nostalgic, really. It does take me back to the second half of the 1980s when there's a lot of good... African stuff around so 
great to get that. He has a huge back catalogue. I only have, I've got his album Amen, which comes, I'm not sure where that comes in the catalogue before or after this one, I'm not sure. But um, I will continue to look for his records or, uh, yeah, I don't look for them, but I occasionally stumble across them. Not much point looking for them, I don't think. And then this one also from Oxfam, and this was this was going really cheap. This is only about maybe two pounds fifty. Uh, this is Lady Smith Black Mambazo, and their album uh, Journey of Dreams, which came out in uh, da, 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 1988. So from quite a similar period. Going to hazard a guess that these two records both come from the same collection. Actually, in fact, the Muddy Waters may well have come from the same collection as well. So these guys obviously um, achieved huge worldwide fame um, off the back of Graceland. Uh, in fact, there is a song on this album dedicated to Paul Simon. Well, there's Amazing Grace, which is arranged by Paul Simon, and he sings on it. But the track which is about Paul Simon is called Amafico Okundusia, which translates as Wings to Fly. And there's a verse in it. It was in Joburg in Johannesburg in 1985 when I first met Paul Simon. It did not take a long time that I saw myself having wings to fly. Paul Simon came in for a huge amount of flack for working with some of those African guys, but uh, Lady Smith, Black Mombazo are an example of a band who would have had a great career anyway in South Africa. I mean, their back catalogue is truly vast. I lost count of how many albums there are. But it was uh, it was when they teamed up with Paul Simon, where you know where their international reputation really uh, <laughs> achieved a shot in the arm, shall we say? And um, the music is just beautiful. You know, it lures you to sleep, it soothes you. It's uh, medicine music, really. Um, their stuff is quite, to me anyway, it's quite much of a muchness. I don't know how many of their records I need in my collection because they are. They're all quite similar, you know, the vibe, it's sort of a cappella African voices, but um, beautiful stuff and, and really hard to leave behind when you find it in a charity shop going for £2.50. It's like there's no way that that's not coming home with you. So great stuff. Lady Smith, Black Mombazo and uh, The Journey of Dreams. And the final one from Oxfam. This is great, actually. I'm really pleased to pick this up because I nearly didn't. Um, this is a guy whose records I've been looking for for a long time and they're very hard to come by. This is not one of the ones that I had on my radar at all, it's a much later one. I've got his classic albums on a CD box set uh, and this is a much later one. This is Bob James and his album Hands Down. Now Bob James came up in the 1970s really as an arranger. Uh, he's a pianist, he worked with Quincy Jones, Grover Washington Jr and uh, you know all the great jazz greats and he just has that great ability, you know, great arranger, just really really cool arrangements, cool jazz, just you know sh I think occasionally shading over into a few Fusion music, but um, always quite groove-based, late-night groove-based music. Now this album, Hands Down, this one came out in 1982. It was his 10th album. And when I looked inside the cover, I could see uh, that there were some synthesizers on it. And I was thinking, 1982? I couldn't check on my phone because I can't get a signal in Oxfam. So uh, I took a punt. It wasn't expensive. Brought it home, played it, and I really enjoyed it. Um, it is a little bit cheesy at times. It's got a bit of an airbrushed 80s sound going on, but there's some great playing on it. There's some great vocals on it as well, actually. I think it's the second track. Is it the second track? Macumba. Uh, there's one track which has some female vocals on it, and uh, it just sounds great. Yeah, Patty Austin is the singer on Macumba, and um, it's very, very funky, finger-clicking, kind of nice, nice. Uh, jazz, funk, um, but it's electric, it's definitely electric. Um, but there's, you know, there's still some good acoustic stuff on here. There's a beautiful piano, acoustic piano song on here uh, called Roberta, which has got some wonderful playing on it. So, really pleased to get it. I'm still looking for those classic Bob James albums that came out in the 1970s. They were all called Bob James, or they were, I think, I think they were called One, Two, Three, Four, something like that. Um, worth hearing, you can get them on CD, but. Um, on record, less easy to find. Uh, so we're going to finish with three records from Acorn Antiques, a uh, antiques centre just outside Wrexham. Been buying quite a few things from there. I've shown quite a few things in my latest few videos. This one again is going to continue the 
uh, the kind of black theme. This is the Staple Singers and Will the Circle Be Unbroken? And this was really cheap. It was only about three pounds. I've been looking for uh, any of their records really on vinyl for a number of years now, they're quite hard to come by. This is a very early one, um, it's a reissue from 1969 of an album uh, which originally came out on VJ in 1960, uh, so this is a reissue on Buddha, uh, always nice to see the Buddha label and um, you know it's an American record, good thing to find in a in a um, antiques place just outside your hometown and uh, this has just got some really early cuts on it. Will the circle be unbroken? Come up, come on up in glory. Um, just great early gospel music by uh, Pops and Mavis Staples and the rest of the family. Great thing to find. The record's in really nice shape actually. You're nice to find some of their classic 1970s albums. I've got a couple of Mavis's solo records, but um, not always that easy to find. So great stuff. The staple singers. And then also from um, Akon Antiques, just two classic pop rock albums really. This one, a record, I'm surprised I've never actually owned it, because back in the day when I was a kid I used to buy their singles, and I had a couple of their albums. I had, um, this is the Boontown Rats, I had The Fine Art of Surfacing, and Tonic for the Troops, but I never had this one, this is their debut album. Um, and. Um, this one would have come out probably in 1977, I'm going to say. It's got Looking After Number One on it and um, Kicks, Never Bite the Hand That Feeds, produced by Robert John Mutt Lang, or Langer, uh, the guy who went on to have huge success with ACDC. This is a really good debut album. I don't think the Boontown Rats ever got a huge amount of credibility as a punk band. I think they were a bit too, maybe a bit too Bruce Springsteen-y. But this album has got a lot of energy, a lot of attitude, and uh, yeah, I just really enjoyed it, and I can't quite believe it hasn't been in my collection until now. On the great green Ensign label, um, in beautiful condition, only cost me about three pounds, so great to get, and it's making me want to go back and dig out my other two Boontown Rats now and give them a spin. I suppose they are a band that have been a little bit forgotten now, you know, the sort of the post Live Aid, Bob Geldof, he had such a huge profile that it rather, you know, put his band into shadow. Years ago, I saw him play live. It was at the Nantwich Jazz and Blues Festival, and it was a, a sort of chicken in the basket type gig. He was promoting a solo album at the time, and he came on. Everybody was just sort of there, you know, sat eating chicken and chips, and he, he looked a bit uneasy. And um, he did his new album, and then he did a, a selection of Boonsang Rat songs, but he looked quite uncomfortable, I thought. He had a stinking cold, actually. I saw him in the hotel bar before the show. He came in with a with a handkerchief over his, <laughs> over his mouth. So, um, anyway, sorry, a bit of a ramble. The last one, um, a record I've been looking for, this is the Go-Go's, their first album, Beauty and the Beat, and um, quite good because I recently also picked up a copy of the Funboy 3 album, Waiting, which has got a cover version. There's a cover version on that album of um, Our Lips Are Sealed, which is the opening track on this album. So, yeah, I picked up the second Go-Go's album um, a couple of years ago now, the one where they're on water skis on the front, is it called Vacation? and was, was just looking for this one. So again, really nice condition and cheap as chips. So um, on the great IRS label, Miles Copeland, of course. Uh, so there we go from Acorn Antiques, just outside Wrexham, the Go-Go's Beauty and the Beat. So uh, that does not clear the inbox, as I'm, as I'm fond of saying. Um, plenty more to show, but um, that will do for now. Thanks to subscribers, old and new, been picking up some new subscribers of late, which I'm always grateful for. Always grateful for your comments and interaction. And um, I shall hope to see you very soon. Take care for now. Bye bye.